Okay, morning everyone. Well, it's morning here in the UK. Uh, thought it'd be good to have a look through the tracker on the Trans Am race again, as there has been a bit of a change up in the front uh, front riders in the lead. Uh, we've started to see the kind of different strategies play out a bit, and you know, some a bit more tired than others. And uh, as I was talking about the other day, so it'd be good to see what, what what's going on with that. Um, so I started this. Uh, this is about twenty you know, just under 30 hours ago, so yesterday kind of morning, it's now, uh, you know, morning in the US, you can see 9th of June there, and we're now on the 10th. So if I start this, you can see here, as I spoke about yesterday, everyone stopped in this town here called Leicester, or Lander, to have a uh, have a sleep at, while um, Benjamin continued on. Now, Benjamin took a lot less sleep last night, and... Um, the others did start to then catch up with him on that because they are moving a bit faster from having a good sleep. So I said yesterday that you know you might expect him to start to slow down uh, his moving average speed because of you know his, his sleep pattern, and that has been visible as you can see here during the day. So as we approach evening we can see that everyone has really brought that gap back down on him. You know, it was uh, you know, 80 miles or so, and now it's really nothing. And what we're seeing here also is Evan is catching up with the others and regrouping with them. Evan is a, a veteran, having come third in the race last year. He uh, does know how to, you know, keep tight sleep pattern and things like that and look after his body. So the situation in the race now, if we stop that, as we've watched everyone group back up, is actually Evans coming to the lead. You've got everyone else in Walden here. The time is late and they are, you know, stopping to sleep. You've got Peter Anderson and John Lester. And actually, you've got to go back up the road and then you've got Benjamin Colwell, who has been passed by the other three, even though they took a lot longer sleep. So it'd be interesting if we click on Benjamin Colwell's pattern, right, and we can go down... And look at his sleep. So here you can see this is uh, the night before last, because it's it's well, not tonight in the US, but last night. You know, hour and a half. Now Benjamin is a is a veteran, and he did place, as we can see here in 2015. I've just gone to the Trans Am website and loaded this up. In 2015, he did place. Sorry, in 2000 and. 16 he did place fifth so you know he, he has done the race before he understands it but uh, maybe not quite adjusted his sleep pattern to to keep himself feeling strong if we go to Evan who is a veteran who has placed 2016 third And we go back to look at him because he's just caught up with the others. We see here, although, you know, consistent sleep, but less sleep. And one of the reasons that he has managed to catch up with, with the others. Yeah, be careful with these uh, sleep things. If you kind of zoom in on them, they, they do go a bit wild. We can see here that last night he took maybe two hours sleep, put in a big, big shift. So he has caught up, but it has been at the expense of sleep for him. Whereas if we go to look at John Lester and Peter Anderson, who are you know, running a really tight race, you can see pretty consistent sleep. Last night, John Lester actually had a big sleep. So it's gotta be, you know, or if that's 20, 40, eight hours there, maybe, yeah, eight hours. So, you know, he's gonna be feeling well rested. And although, you know, He's now third. There's nothing between these three. They're in the same town. So after 1,760 miles, they're all in the you know what? They're all in the same mileage. And Benjamin Colwell is only you know five miles behind. So there's not much in it. When you start going back down the road, then you start getting some slightly bigger mileage increases where people are going to kind of struggle to catch up a bit. Now I was looking this up earlier on because <clears throat> I thought it'd be interesting to talk about. Mike Hall's record is at uh, 17 days and 16 hours it takes him to complete the race. And if we go back, we've got Leo Wilcox here. Now, her record is actually only 18 hours. So there's really four hours difference in those two records at the finish. 
So although I said the other day that Mike doesn't, you know, he doesn't really slow down or fade, what we see from Laird is are actually speeding up towards the, the end and coming back a bit. Because at the moment between them, you know, if you look at the mileage markers, this, you know, she's on about 1,600 and Mike is on probably 1,000, you know, 800. So there's 200 miles between them, which is, you know, almost 12 hours on the road. So she takes back about uh, you know eight hours on on Mike. So we can expect that gap to grow narrower. So if Janie wants to stay ahead of uh, Leo's record, she's going to have to speed up. As I said before, we've got all the middle group here really really spread out. In honesty, the race within a race isn't going to start to develop until we get you know across to around Kentucky or something when people are going to start realizing that they are racing for a you know top twenty place. Uh, and we're going to see these people start pushing on more. You know, if we pick, for example, Ryan Henry, and we can just zoom in on him, what we'll see is, you know, a really consistent and long sleep pattern each night. And that's something that we will see consistently throughout the middle markers, is that they are sleeping every night and for a long time. And they're really, you know, looking after their body and, and just listening to it and do, doing their best with that. At the back, I picked out uh, that lady, Jodie Ashley, yesterday. Actually, she scratched since we spoke yesterday. Uh, we've got a couple of ladies at the back and then some other people here. One thing you will notice if you go and look at any of these people back here by clicking on them is they're all older, you know, and there are some actually older people in the race doing this, and you've got to take your hat off to them uh, for the commitment and, and energy it must take to be able to do this. It's It's really quite impressive, so... As last year, we always look forward to following these people in the Lantern Rouge, uh, the last rider in the race. And there are some people that, uh, you know, can take a couple months to do this and they get through it. And so, you know, congratulations to them. So it'll be interesting to follow that and who sticks with it throughout the, uh, throughout the duration. So once again, if you've got any questions, then we can look at that. And it'll be interesting to see how this, uh, this trio and then Benjamin and then Sophony and Michael kind of develop over the next few days because there's not a lot in it and some people are obviously starting to get tired while others are uh, still feeling fresh. All right, cheers guys. Any questions, just uh, reach out.